Hey, it's Sean Mars, application engineer with Hawkridge Systems, and I was working on this home project, and I thought it would be a great way to show creating simple parts and a simple assembly in SolidWorks. So in this video, we're going to be creating parts, going over a bunch of sketching tips and tools, uh, looking at some configurations, dealing with a downloaded mesh file, and a bunch of other tips as well. So the idea is that since I've been stuck at home, I've had to use this small punching bag as like my everyday sparring partner. And so I thought maybe I could add a little utility to this guy by giving him an arm or two. So I immediately went to the internet and just saw what was available, you know, what are people already doing? And I found a number of things. And the very first thing we have to note is look at this guy. We have to know that I'm never going to make anything better than this guy. It's amazing. I'll probably never make anything as good as this uh, in my entire life. But if we move past that and we take a look at um, what is available for purchase, uh, we can find these that kind of strap on. Um, they're kind of expensive and realistically, I should be using the software I have. I should be using the, the 3D printers that I have upstairs. So we're gonna go ahead and make our own. So I did some more research and I found this cool blog uh, called bornady.com. And this guy goes over what he calls the constant force joint, which is kind of this repositionable, in this case, a phone stand. And he uses these skate bearings um, so that you can kind of tension it down, but then reposition it really nicely. And he has all this stuff available for download for 3D printing. And I, you might be thinking, hey, you know, skate bearings, they're not really for axial loading, but you know, I looked around my apartment and here's all of my skate bearings. I don't have a lot of thrust bearings sitting around. Uh, so I went around and just saw, you know, what other stuff can I find in my apartment and just make use of today? And that's what I did. So I basically just started building those e existing parts in SolidWorks. So here I'm starting with the pool noodle and I'm just roughly getting diameters for it. Um, I'm actually using this nice tool that says enable on-screen numeric input on entity creation. It lets me put in dimensions just immediately as I'm sketching. So if I definitely know what I'm already want to put in there, I can just make things really quick for it. Um, otherwise, just a quick, uh, simple extrusion here and I added some color just to make it match my nice uh, pool noodle. Why not? Uh, the next one is the bamboo rods. So this one's actually kind of interesting because since they're organic, uh, they're gonna have different diameters. So I modeled this as two separate cylinders and then I'm gonna use configurations to control those sizes and make sure my actual 3D printed part is going to match up to that. Uh, you can also see here I added in some nice uh, wood appearance even though it's not actually bamboo appearance. Let's make some configurations now. And I can make as many as I want. I'll just, you know, access these in the assembly once I'm using them. Uh, to actually make the changes, what I'm gonna do is just double click, uh, bring up the modify box, and change this value to the other size that I've I measured out. But I have to make sure I use this option, this configurations, uh, or this configuration, so that it actually makes the change just here. Um, and I'm gonna change the other one, and you can actually see that this one I forgot to hit that setting, which is super common. So if you just right click and say configure dimension, it'll bring up this whole modify configurations table, and then you can just change the values here, and it makes it a lot easier to make sure you didn't mess up like I did when I first did this. So. Uh, that's that. Next one is the threaded rods. So I'm going to, oh, while I'm doing this, I'm using a lot of mouse gestures. So this is on your right mouse button. If you hold that down and start dragging, you'll get a little palette. And in sketches is where I really like using it because you can just customize it to put all your normal sketch tools on there. You can see I'm even super lazy. I put my, my shortcuts bar on there as well and I can start up my extrusion. For a lot of these extrusions, I'm using mid plane. Um, that puts the sketch plane right in the middle of the extrusion, which then makes it more symmetric, makes it easier to place in an assembly. Uh, lastly, I'm using a little command search up there. If you don't know about that command search up at the top of SolidWorks, um, it is amazing. No matter what level of SolidWorks you're at, it really makes finding tools really quick, especially things like cosmetic thread that I don't use every day. All that's going to do is add this 
fake cosmetic thread appearance on there and I could have it assign a whole callouts as well and that would bring into drawings but I'm just doing it to make it look good in the assembly. Okay, now it comes to Rob at BornD.com's part. So this was an STL file or a mesh file for 3D printing. Um, SolidWorks can open up a wide variety of mesh files, uh, but you do want to check your options to see how it's going to import. So here I'm actually about to import as a graphics body, which is not the right choice in this case. So I just messed up and forgot to bring it in as a solid body. I got all excited about using these mesh tools, but Anything that's exported from a CAD file, so this one, it's kind of obvious it's exported from a CAD file because it's such a uniform mesh, um, that can usually just be imported in as a solid body directly, and then you just have a solid body. It might be tessellated, but you're ready to, basically you're ready to mate or interference detection and all that good stuff in the assembly. Since I didn't do that, and I brought it in as a graphics body, I'm gonna have to use some of these mesh modeling tools to give me something to mate with. So I'm using Surface from Mesh, which will let me basically uh, use the little triangles on here to create surfaces that'll represent this model. And I'm just getting like these mating surfaces, the things I need to help me place it in the assembly. Um, I do need to be careful because I'm gonna leave this as a surface body, which means it won't really show up as like in like a mass properties for weight or interference detection. So just have to keep that in mind. Okay, so now that I'm finally through all that, um, I'm going to actually work on the part that I'm going to 3D print. So here's a little preview so you know what's going on here. Um, it's going to have the bamboo rod and the pool noodle on one side, and then I'm going to have this little head that'll be where it'll interface with the other part and all the constant force joint components. First things first is I'm going to make the uh, diameters for the bamboo rod and the pool noodle. Um, this is going to be a press fit for both of them really so I'm kind of you know fudging the dimensions right now and I'll check it later. Next I'm going to make the head there so you're going to see I use construction geometry quite a bit. It really helps keep things centered, um, symmetric and then I'm making sure to grab that uh, those tangencies at this point to keep things nice and smoothly connected. I'm going to trim this back and I always like using that keep trimmed entities as construction geometry option. It just keeps everything around so it makes dimensioning easier, it makes editing easier um, and you can always delete it later if you really wanted to. All right, so let's go ahead and extrude this. Um, I'm actually going to use a through all both uh, option for the extrude, so it'll just go to the farthest extents of the of the model, and I'll kind of fix and trim out the other bit a little later. All right, um, throughout this, I'm actually you know I should note that. I'm using uh, default reference planes whenever possible. So I prefer to use them um, if it's convenient because you can't break them, they don't go away. It just helps keep your model a little more robust um, when you go to edit it later. So you can't you know, break one thing and have it trickle down and break a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so more construction lines. Definitely gonna be using it here. I use a lot of them, helps illustrate what you're doing, helps do dimension. Um, I'm actually going to be using one of these for what's a, called a double dimension. And that double dimension is going to actually represent the thickness of the washer I'm going to use between the two components. Whoa, that happened fast. Let's see it again in our action replay. All right, so to you do the double dimension, you click on the line, you click on the center line, and then you drop the dimension on the opposite side. And you can see that it's going to double it out there. Um, other than that, I'm going to use, say, equals 1.6 millimeter, so the millimeter will convert it from inches to millimeters for me, or other way around, millimeters to inches. Um, and the equals will keep it in this format, so it's just easier to go and edit it later and, you know, keep using the millimeter unit system. All right, so now this is where I'm gonna slim this guy down. So I'm gonna use convert entities to grab that lower edge of the cylinder and then do a through all cut with it. The difference here is that I'm going to use the option flip side to cut um, and that'll delete everything on the outside of my circle. 
and we'll really streamline this guy. All right, so this one you can see here, I'm waking up the center of this arc by hovering my, uh, hovering my pencil over there. And that'll make sure that this hole is centered on that arc. If it moves around, it gets bigger or smaller, I know that it's always centered there. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna go through and I'm adding these angled faces to multiple spots. This is purely for 3D printing. It allows me to uh, print some of these things without any support material. So that's always preferable. So same thing I'm doing right here is I'm just adding in that angled surface uh, with a revolve. When I go to do this revolve, you actually see that I'm getting rebuild errors because I'm intersecting, self-intersecting. And rather than really worry about getting this perfect, all I'm gonna do is chop off a little bit of this profile. And that way, it's just a tiny, tiny bit. And that way it can't hit itself when it revolves. There's other ways to fix this, but my 3D printer's resolution's so large, it's not even gonna be able to print that detail anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. So this last bit here is going to be um, a relief cut. So this is another thing that I don't really wanna have to worry about the 3D printing settings. Um, I'm just going to basically make a, uh, I'm gonna have a pretty tight press fit with that bamboo rod. So I'm just gonna give it a little relief there. Whoa, Speed Racer. Let's get another action replay. Okay, those are getting dumb, but um, what, what I did there is I selected my entire sketch, but because I have one center line selected along with those other solid lines, uh, I can just go right to clicking on mirror entities and it'll automatically decide, oh, we're mirroring across that center line. So it's just a little shortcut. Otherwise, I just need to get this 45 degree angle here. It's the kind of generally accepted angle for um, printing without supports. All right, so all the parts are done. Uh, in the next video, I'll be putting them all together in the assembly file. So I'll be doing mating, some editing. Uh, I'll show you evaluation tools like interference detection, and I'll actually show you the parts 3D printing. So I think I'm gonna call this SolidWorks at Home. Anyway, if you liked this video, please let me know in the comments, and I know I covered a lot of this stuff uh, pretty quickly, so if there's anything you'd like me to do in a more detailed video, then just let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Will Sean be able to get these parts together? Will the joint function as desired? Will Sean make his punching bag too beefy and overconfident? Find out next time on SolidWorks at Home.